Welcome to Mercedes-Benz Vans. We have the year 2020 and that means that we have started with the production of the Sprinter 25 years ago. And we have another anniversary. 25 years ago, the van division within Mercedes-Benz was born. The Sprinter has become a synonym for a complete class of vehicles and everybody talks about a Sprinter and not a three and a half tons van. But uh, the, the history of the Mercedes-Benz vans started much, much earlier and that's what we want to look at now. We jump back to the year 1955. This was the start of the van development. Up to then, there were, were upgraded passenger cars or downgraded trucks, and there was no real van development in the whole wild world. Mercedes-Benz, the L319 of Mercedes-Benz was first as a standalone van development. On the IAA in 1955, the L319 was launched and it was available as a bus, as a panel van, and all the other variants which we today know are available as a van. This is the way people traveled to Italy in, in the mid-50s. We have a panorama roof, which was the first then in these years, and we have a very luxurious leather interior of the bus, and this was the way the people traveled in these years. Another interesting feature for this early 319 is the sliding door. They developed for the then Deutsche Bundespost and it would be a real feature for the easy way to enter and, and exit the vehicle for today's parcel services. We ride the year 1967 and the L319 is a perfect example for the life cycle development of a model. We have implemented the brake booster, we have implemented a safety steering column, we have implemented a new steering wheel which has reached crash standards and safety was developed into the old vehicle. In the early 60s, Mercedes-Benz started with crash tests for its passenger cars and of course the vans were tested as well. Well, we stayed in the year 1967 the 319 was history because we had a new car then. It was the Model 309. The development focus with the, in, the, in the Model 309 was the driver fitness safety. That means big mirrors, big windows, all the, the, the switches and everything close by. The fitness of the driver was the focus of the development. In addition, the Model 309 was the first van with automatic safety belts. The Model 309 was the first van to have a real name, and this name resulted of the production factory. So this van was called the Düsseldorf. Ten years later, we now have the year 1977, Mercedes-Benz vans launched the T1. This was the second vehicle which actually had a name after its production factory. This was called the Prema. During life cycle, the T1 got a lot of safety features implemented into the vehicle. So it was the first van with disc brakes in, at the front axle from the beginning. And it was the first van with ABS. But then the whole interior was developed to reach the new crash test safety standards. After 18 years of production time, it was time for a new car and Mercedes-Benz Vans launched the new Sprinter. But before the new Sprinter was launched, the T1 had another big contract of the, of the German Deutsche Bundespost, of the Post, uh, for 10,000 vehicles which were ordered right at the end of the production time. Of course, the new Sprinter got everything with what was developable in these days as safety features. So it got disc brakes, front and rear axle, it got an ABS standard, and of course, it was the first van with an airbag. In 
In the year 2000, it was already obvious that the Sprinter is a very successful selling vehicle and is and will be in the future. And so it was decided to give him a full safe li facelift, just the way passenger car was doing that. For a van, the facelift was quite tremendous. You got new headlights, a new, complete new front, and the interior was changed entirely, and it was the first time that passenger car feeling was implemented in the development of a van. It got a joystick gear lever, and the interior noise and the interior feeling was absolutely passenger car-like. The Mercedes-Benz Sprinter was the first van with ESP, and the implementation of this system was a tremendous step in terms of vehicle safety all over the world. In 2006, Mercedes-Benz launched the new Sprint. This was quite a challenge for our development department to make the vehicle better than the very successful former Sprinter. But they managed to do that with the implementation of a lot of new assistance systems. The adaptive ESP detects where the load is, is located in the vehicle and what weight it has and can adjust the brakings accordingly. In addition to the ESP, a wide variety of assistance features were implemented into the new Sprinter, but the interior was the main focus, which now really has passenger car feeling. Again, 12 years later, Mercedes-Benz has introduced the new Sprinter in 2018. Again, it was very hard for development to improve the very successful NCV3, but we managed. We implemented a front-wheel drive, we have a tractor head now, and we have an all-wheel drive and a wide variance of, of assistance systems. We started this journey in time in, in 1955 with the L319. And now we have the year 2020, and we have the latest evolutionary step of the Sprinter with the e-Sprinter. The future of mobility will be electric. And the answer of Mercedes-Benz vans for future transportation is the electric Sprinter. For our development people, it was a tough job to combine load capacity and load volume with range and drivability. And we made it. The e-Sprinter has the same load volume and the same load capacity as the Sprinter with combustion engine. This was 65 years of van history. I was part of it for 40 years and I'm looking forward to everything that's lying ahead. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Meet Mercedes Digital. Today is a very special episode because we are here to celebrate a birthday, the 25th birthday to be exact of a vehicle that has become an integral part of the commercial transportation landscape. The Mercedes-Benz Sprinter is 25. And even when it first rolled off the assembly line back in 1995, Mercedes-Benz vans already had a 40-year history. So why don't we start out by taking a minute to have a look at the colorful past of this very beloved vehicle.
And those were just a few impressions of Mercedes-Benz Sprinter history. Of course, we would like to know a lot more today. That's why I have guests that are very familiar with Mercedes-Benz vans. And my first guest has been involved with the Sprinter for quite some time now. He has been in charge of marketing for over 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a warm welcome for Norbert Kunz. Hi there. Hi, Jasmine. Hey. Join me. Step right Thank up. You. Get comfy. Give me that safety <laughs> handshake. All right. There we go. Thanks. Nice to see you. How are you today? Fine. You? I'm fine, and I'm excited about a pretty special day today. And I guess that the vehicle we're talking about does have quite the story to tell, doesn't it? Yes, of course. The Sprinter and the predecessors have very um, many stories to tell. How did it all begin? This one is the first model to carry the name Sprinter you have seen uh, mm -hmm. right now, but the roots run deeper. Let's go back 40 years before the Sprinter came out. Sure. 1955, the world was divided, rock and roll moved the people, and the German economic miracle begun. And the L319 started its career. Mm -hmm. A diesel engine from our passenger car colleagues out of the 180D uh, with 43 horsepowers had to pull a GVW of 3.6 tons. All right, so what comes next? What happened after that? 12 years later, in 67, the L309 was launched. Flower power, long hair, bell bottoms, and peace signs, some of the things I remember. <laughs> the nickname of this one was Dusseldorfer because it was produced in Dusseldorf, like the Sprinter today is still produced there. And after the Düsseldorfer actually came the predecessor to the Sprinter we know today, right? Yeah, that's the T1. He arrived in uh, 77 with the disco area. Perhaps the BGs have uh, used <laughs> them as a tour bus. The nickname was Bremer. Any idea why? Because it was built in the beautiful city of Bremen, I'm sure. Correct. <laughs> the safety increased. Uh, to many standard things like disc brakes in the front, later options like AC uh, and ABS became uh, available. So it was a big step forward in all these commercial vehicle applications. And the cool part is that this vehicle is one that you will still see on the streets every now and then, right? Still, today. Yes, it was very popular. So uh, it has many second life cycles mm -hmm. uh, due to the main, uh, many variants it has. So you see, still see them today. Uh, sometimes they are converted to uh, campers mm -hmm. and have a second or third life cycle. And perhaps even they have a disco ball inside uh, to make it much more fancy for the users. Haven't we all dreamed of that? A disco ball in yeah. the well, some of Could us, be. I have. Yeah. <laughs> so, Norbert. Okay. But anyhow, let's move away from the disco ball. Let's move from disco to the 90s to the grunge era, so yep. to speak, musically. That's the year our star was born, the star that everything is about in this episode, the yep. Sprinter. And it was 1995, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's celebrating its 25th birthday this year. And this vehicle defined an entire vehicle segment and also was the founding of our van division. The founding of the van division, and I'm sure that you and I, in our year of 25, were still very young, very inexperienced, but you could not say the same for the Sprinter, could you? Uh, no, I think it was different. Um, the development was a big milestone, so we now have sold more than 4 million Sprinters all over the world in more than 130 countries till today. So you see the Sprinter all over the world um, mm -hmm. if you travel around. It's true. When you're traveling, you can see the Sprinter globally, and it's very popular. Why is that so? Where does the huge success story come from? So we put all our expertise into this vehicle mm -hmm. uh, and all our know-how. We try to get in close cooperation with our customers so that we can meet all their requirements. Using this target, we have, to be, we have been able to establish a worldwide model for transportation based on safety, efficiency and flexibility. Would you like to share some examples for that before we move on to the next generation? Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important that our Sprinter is very close to our passenger cars. So it was the first van with four disc brakes, ABS and airbags and so on. Mm -hmm. And its common rail diesel engine had a good acceleration, a low fuel consumption. And so it was very comfortable to drive for our customers. 
All right. And then what uh, came up for your customers was the second generation, so to speak. And we all remember that very well here in Germany because that was 2006. That was the year that we hosted the FIFA World Cup. So how did the Sprinter then develop and improve even more in the year 2006? It was a great year, as you mentioned. Many driver assistance systems um, made, for our, made our Sprinter more attractive, safer, and underline its position as key player in the large van segment. ESP is now load adaptive, recognizing size and position of the payload. 2013, with a Sprinter facelift, further safety and assistance systems came to our van segment directly from our cars. We adapted crosswind, collision prevention, and blind spot assist, to mention only some of them. Right, Norbert, and we are going to uh, stick to those safety topics because you know yeah. what they say, um, a picture says more than a thousand words. So Norbert, if that is true, then a video must be worth at least a million words, right? Let's take a look at some of those safety features just mentioned that the new Sprinter has to offer. All right, and it looks pretty much like the Sprinter offers drivers just about every safety feature you have to offer. Is that so, Norbert? Yes, safety is in the DNA of Mercedes and therefore also in the Sprinter. Mm -hmm. All systems support the driver in city traffic, country roads, or on motorways. What else would you consider very unique about the Sprinter? The new level of connectivity. Our infotainment system, MBUX, which is directly uh, taken over from the A-Class in our new Sprinter is one of our main highlights. So, hey Mercedes is brand new for large van business. When I ask you something really difficult, then it would be to describe the Sprinter using just one word. Can you actually do that? It's versatility. Versatility and why? The Sprinter is easily adaptable, mm -hmm. has high uh, load capacity and fits to every business. So, so some examples for this, uh, we have totally different use profiles. You have customers who drive only 6,000 kilometers a year, other customers drive 300,000. So the spread is unique. Mm -hmm. And the same is if you um, look at the aspect entry and leaving the vehicle, mm -hmm. we have customers who do it five times a day and others do it 150 times a day. Right. So it's totally different. And the Sprinter is adaptable for all kinds of business. Mm -hmm. In some applications, we need the support of the bodybuilders, but these over 1,000 variants we can deliver directly from the factory are the best base for all kinds of conversions and upfits. And so you're able to adapt to all of your customers' needs, and of course you stay yeah. very diverse doing so. Diversity also applies to the drivetrains themselves though, right? Yes, for mm -hmm. sure. We have front-wheel drive, a rear-wheel drive, and a 4x4, so mm -hmm. everything you need is available on the Sprinter. All right, and we're going to stick to that right there. Drivetrains is actually the key word right now because they are becoming more and more important, especially in terms of sustainability. And Ola Kalenius, he spoke a lot about just that topic when he was on our very first episode. And the new Sprinter is also making a big contribution. Let's check it out. We have now moved into the future with the eSprinter. Our second guest can tell us a lot more about it. Here comes head of eDrive at Vans, Benjamin Kela. There you are. <laughs> Hi, Norbert. Nice to see you. Should we do this too? All right. Hi, Jasmine. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Now, besides the fact, Benjamin, that the eSprinter is obviously an electric drive vehicle, what else is special about it? What are the special features? Well, the main advantage is there are no big differences between the Sprinter and the eSprinter, except for the drivetrain. So if you've driven the Sprinter before, switching to the eSprinter is more than easy. The eSprinter combines 25 years of Sprinter experience with our completely newly developed electric drivetrain. And it is even built on the same assembly line. We can build either high volumes and we can switch between different powertrains anytime. We're able to react flexibly to developments, market requirements and demand. And we've heard a lot about how flexibility is very essential. Norbert was also telling us how customers are put in the center of attention, main focus being on them. Does that also apply to the eSprinter as well? The eSprinter is our second commercial electric model after the EV2. Mm -hmm. The eSprinter continues the electrification of our Mercedes-Benz Vans portfolio and it puts the customer at the center of our activities. 
You can deliver goods, drive to construction sites, or do service work without local emissions. It is an important contribution to protecting our climate. But our service offer goes much further. Okay, intriguing. Tell me more, please. Well, our eDrive ecosystem, it helps with the planning and establishment of an electric fleet and charging infrastructure. Our apps and tools allow customers to analyze routes, calculate costs, and support fleet managers in operations of their fleet. In this way, they can gain full transparency to whether an electric vehicle is right for their needs or not. So again, it's also about giving customers lots of flexibility. How do you do that? Yes, our flexible battery concept allows adaptation to individual requirements. Mm -hmm. So we offer two different battery options with two different ranges and two different payloads. Flexibility is also provided by our integrated quick charging function. Mm -hmm. It allows charging from 10 to 80% in just 25 minutes. Energy recuperation is also made flexible by providing four recuperation levels. The eSprinter has a maximum range of more than 160 kilometers and meets the demand of typical urban environments. More exciting news to come. All right, and you heard the man. Thank you so much, Benjamin. More exciting news to come, and it's going to come right here. I think this all-electric van here has, though, already done its work. I've heard that you have brought along a whole load of refreshments, and I've already told the entire crew, so we're looking forward. I hope that's true, Benjamin. Absolutely. A toast to 25 years of the Sprinter with everyone here and later with our team. All right, a toast with water, of course, today, of right? Of course, it's all about safety. Okay, so safety first, and we're going to toast with water. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Benjamin, and thank you, Norbert. That brings us to the end of our exciting trip through time and to the end of this episode. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again. Stay safe. Until then, cheers. Happy birthday.